In this video, I'm going to show you how to get shaders set up on the Wii U version of RetroArch. So shaders have to be one of my favorite aspects of RetroArch. They let you mimic old looks of CRTs, you can do other fun filters, and just a bunch of cool things with them. Unfortunately on the Wii U, getting shaders isn't anywhere near as easy as it is on other platforms because you can't just download them from the online updater like I showed in my initial setup video. I thought you could, it turns out you can't. You've got to get them compiled either using the Nintendo SDK, which makes it so you can't distribute them, or there is another method of doing so that people have found out and been using to actually start distributing them. So I was able to track down one of those packs and actually give it a shot on the Wii U, and it turns out shaders on the Wii U actually really suck. Practically everyone I tried didn't apply to the Wii U correctly with numerous scaling issues and output issues, and they just look terrible compared to any other platform. They also put a massive drain on the Wii U's GPU, and certain shaders will cause your games to lag incredibly badly. So honestly, I've come to the conclusion that shaders on Wii U really aren't worth it, but I want to show you how to get them set up so you could try them out for yourself, maybe you could do more fine tweaking to make them look better, but it's not a process I'm interested in personally, so I'm just never going to really use them on the Wii U. But I'm going to show you how to get them anyway, so let's dive in. So to get started, we need to get our Wii U shaders downloaded. It took me a long time to track these down, so now that I have, I don't want any of you to go through that same process, so I have re-uploaded them to my Dropbox, that way we have a direct link to them that should work for a long time. So I'll have a link in the description below to get you to my zip file that I've uploaded to my Dropbox, so basically, you'll just go to the link I have in the description, it will bring you to my Dropbox folder for the Wii U shaders.zip, it'll show you all the contents inside of it here. But what we need to do is just click on the little download icon here in the upper right-ish area. And then tell it to do a direct download. And then after those are finished downloading, just get them extracted. However you extract zip files, I just use 7-zip and tell it to extract to a folder just right here. But now that those are extracted, we just got to get them put onto our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, if you followed my original RetroArch setup video for Wii U, I made a folder within my RetroArch folder called Shaders Slang, which is where the Wii U shaders downloaded from the online updater. These don't work. These are completely useless, so just delete everything out of there, like they, they don't work. But now that those are deleted, we can move in the working shaders into this folder. So I'm just going to open up this Wii U shaders folder, copy everything over, and just paste it into the SD card. So just let them copy over and once they're finished, we're ready to move on to the next step. And there we go, now we have all of the Wii U specific shaders copied into our Wii U SD card. Now, just as a note, these can be placed anywhere. They don't have to go inside your RetroArch folder, they don't have to be in a folder named Shader Slang. If you wanted to just copy the Wii U shaders folder directly to your SD card, like the root of your SD card, you could. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you place them, just put them on the SD card. But once those are copied over, we're ready to jump into the Wii U side of things, so go ahead and get your SD card taken out of your computer, put it in the Wii U, and get it booted up. Now just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so if you need to install RetroArch, refer back to that video on steps for how to do so, as well as getting this awesome forwarder channel for your Wii U home screen. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch. You can do this either through the homebrew launcher or through this forwarder channel. Now that RetroArch is loaded up, we need to point it to the directory we have our shaders in, otherwise when you try to load them up, they will not appear. So to do this, we're going to go left on our main menu, go down to Settings, then we're going to go back over to the right side, and we are going to scroll down to Directory at the very bottom. I can press up on the D-pad also, that gets you there quicker. But press A here. But now we're just going to scroll down until we find the option for Video Shaders. So it's a little ways down here, right here. 
So once you have this option selected, press A, and then navigate to the folder that you have your shaders installed in. So again, for me, I have mine in SD card, RetroArch, and shaders slang. So navigate to where you put yours. If you just left them in the Wii U folder that I had pre-built and put them on the root of your SD card, you just go SD, Wii U, shaders. And once you get to the folder, you just select use this directory. Once you have that set, just go ahead and press B to go back out to the main menu, go up, save your configuration file, press A on config file, save current configuration. There we go. But now we can begin loading up content and applying shaders to it. So I'm just going to go up to Super Nintendo. We're going to load up Mega Man X2. Why not? All right. So now that Mega Man X2 has loaded up, let's go ahead and apply a shader to the game. So to do this, just press the home button on your Wii U gamepad to bring up your quick menu. And then you could scroll down to shaders. Now from here, you could go ahead and enable video shaders if they aren't already, and then go down to load. And it should bring you to your shader directory if you just set it in the directory's options like I just showed. So one of my favorite shaders to use is CRT Easy Mode. I think it just looks fantastic, it's very simple, and it looks like a high-end consumer CRT, so I really like this one. But on the Wii U, it is not working right. It doesn't look right. So, let me get to a screen where you can see this a little bit better. There we go. So, if you can see in the Mega Man X2 logo, you can see that it looks very rainbowy, which it's not supposed to. And here we go. On the uh, intro video here, you can see that there is just some really weird scaling going on. I really hope YouTube compression doesn't completely break this, but it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like it should. It doesn't look anywhere near like it should on like it does on any other platform. There's just really bad scaling going on. Now, some people have commented that it might be because the Wii U's video output is just wrong. But even changing the resolutions down to like native 720p or 480p doesn't fix the scaling issues. It actually just makes it look worse. Let's go ahead and get into the game real quick so I can show you one way to try to fix it a little bit. It doesn't fix it completely, but it makes it a little bit better. Alright, just had to kill that guy real quick. But anyway, going back into our shader menu, we can go down here and we can see that there is a shader filter and scale option. So if we change the scaling option and then apply changes, we can kind of make things look a little bit better. So the 1x scale didn't make it look better, got rid of the scanline effect. The 2x scale still doesn't have the scanline effect, but it did reduce the rainbowing effect a little bit. So if I change this to 3x, there we go. We have the proper look of the scan lines, but there is still the rainbowing artifacts happening to an extent, so it's not as good as on other platforms, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. Like, still nowhere near as good, but at least it's passable. Like, I could play like this versus what it looked like originally, I just would not play that way. Now, like I said in the intro, a lot of the Wii U shaders actually cause a ton of lag. So if you see down on the bottom of the screen, there's little items that keep going through. Like you could see items going underneath me. With CRT Easy Mode, this is a very lightweight shader. It doesn't cause lag unless I'm in the retro arc menu but if i were to load up something a little bit more demanding like let's go ahead and load up um let's load up royal well that one just crashed the wii u so there we go there's a great example of how wii u shaders just kind of suck all right well we're gonna skip ahead a bit all right so it finally loaded after about three minutes but it just doesn't work right. So we actually don't have a game display anymore. So let's just go ahead and load up another one since that one is not good. Okay, here we go. I finally found a shader that will load up and not be broken. And as you can see, it causes the game to be a laggy mess. This is a really ugly shader anyway, so I don't know why anyone would use it, but just wanted to demonstrate the whole point that Wii U shaders can cause video lag, 
so really don't expect much out of them. Now, another one of my favorite uses of shaders is particularly for handheld systems. Systems like the Game Gear here just look really interesting when they're blown up to full screen, so I have always loved putting them into a handheld border shader to make it look like I'm playing on a very oversized Game Gear. But unfortunately, with the Wii U version of RetroArch, these types of shaders also have some severe issues if they work at all. So for example, I can go to my console borders and I can apply a Game Gear shader. And as you can see, the video is squished, which is fine because we have it set to a core provided aspect ratio. That's what we'd expect. The problem comes from the fact that we get no video output any longer. And even changing the scaling presets seems to have no effect on this type of problem. So unfortunately, the handheld shaders really just don't seem to work. Which makes me really sad because they're my favorite shader of them all. But I think that's pretty much all I'm going to dive into for the Wii U shaders. Again, they really don't seem to work very well. The ones that do have scaling issues if they don't cause lag. And it's just overall not an ideal experience. But if you want to mess with it further, I'm hoping this will give you the tools to do so. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much going to call it there. If you want to save a shader preset, you can always do so by going to the save and save it as a core preset. That way, every time you load up that core, that shader will be applied. But yeah, that's that's really where I'm going to call it. As always, thank you all so much for watching these tutorials. It makes a big difference for us here, and we are so grateful to all of you for that. As always, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to help you out. But honestly, where shaders are concerned, I think it's best just to ignore them on the Wii U. Now, if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. It goes a long way to keeping the channel going, so thank you all so much for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place going, so we are just super grateful to all of our current champions who have just been with us for so long. Thank you all so much. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.